so the major objective is going to be to understand what exactly is modulus and argument and what are the different properties that we need to know for the dp curriculum so um the first thing is that we we have done already that if a complex number uh, can be written in a and b i form the a part is referred as the real part and b is called as imaginary part now when you plot this on the argon diagram uh, basically where you have real axis and imaginary axis we can put the different complex number in different quadrant like for example if let's say there is a complex number with 2 plus 3i where you can see the real part is positive imaginary part is positive so real now real part of this complex rez is going to be 2 and imaginary z will be uh, going to be 3 so in this case there are, since you have real part and imaginary part both being positive we can um, say that the complex number is going to be in the quadrant number 1 so here we take let's say two units to the right and three units up so this will be the po possible position let's say if the complex number is a and b this is going to be a possible position of the complex number now suppose let's say this is a and this is b this particular distance from the origin to this uh, complex number is called as the modulus of this. So generally we represent with the absolute value sign, the two vertical bars around a complex number mean the modulus or the length you can say in complex number or length of vector a, b you can say. So length of complex number will be a squared plus b square root. Now, for example, if this, this is the complex number, the modulus of this complex number will be 2 squared plus 3 squared root. Do not take 3i squared. Sometimes students make a mistake, 3i squared. So in, in this case where the number is bigger, it will be like, uh, obviously the answer is wrong straight away, but sometimes you don't figure out your mistake and then sub parts are also wrong. So imaginary part is not uh, 3i, imaginary part is only 3. Then constant is referred as imaginary part. So now here what we get is the root of 4 plus 9 that you get is uh, root 13. That's your modulus of this complex number. Now, there are like challenging questions that can be assessed, which involves trigonometry and all, but the focus will be for in, in the beginning is to actually first understand and mainly focus on the properties and application of the arguments. Now, the second quantity that we have to identify and understand is called as argument. So argument of a complex number. So argument of a complex number, generally you will see that it is represented as capital arg z or small arg z. So, so these two are the different things. Um, but let us just first understand what is simply the argument. Now, argument is a very special thing that identifies or places a particular complex number in a particular quadrant. Now, generally the argument is always um, referred from positive direction of the real axis. So let's say if the complex number is here, let's say this is the complex number. Now, if we find out, let's say this angle, let's say this is 30 degrees. Now the argument of this complex number will be 30 degrees. So angle that the complex number makes with the real axis is called as the argument. There are certain specifications, so there are certain um, important things that you need to know. Always remember that the angle is always measured from the positive direction of the real axis. And um, if the angle is between 180, negative 180 to 180, this is referred as called as principal argument. So if your capital ARZ that we're talking about is um, has to be between negative one in a 180 and 180. Now, firstly, let's just try to understand how do we, what are the origins and how we actually place this positive negative angles. Now with this uh, system, as you know that if angle is go taken anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise angle is taken uh, positive, anti-clockwise positive and clockwise angle is always taken as negative. So clockwise angle is taken negative an anti-clockwise angle is taken as positive. Uh, anti-clockwise positive, clockwise negative. 
So let us say if an angle is here. Now, if, it, if this makes an angle of, let's say, 150 degrees. So we, we can see that capital ARZ, let's so say this is the complex number here. So capital ARZ for this will be 150 degrees. So now, second thing is, if I go this way, I could have written this argument also as, let's say, um, negative 210. Now, in this case, I mean, I can go clockwise or anti-clockwise with any sense I want. But uh, if I write down, let's say, ARZ is um, negative two, uh, 210, that can be fine. That is fine because this angle can be written as 210. But this won't be principal argument. So the same angle, you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise to actually find out its position or find out its exact coordinates but um, the principal arguments will have to have this rule that they have to be between negative 180 to 180. Now for example the same angle which is making 150 degrees with real axis can also be written as if I take one rotation and then I come back here so it'll be, it can be written as 360 plus 150 also. So if I take 360 plus 150 that's also basically another argument I mean that same argument I can rewrite it. But that won't be principal argument. This will be just a small ARG, the general argument. So um, for principal arguments, important that you need to have the measurement between negative 180 and 180. Negative 180 not included, positive 180 is included. Now let's take this in context to a problem. So let us first understand the, the entire stuff in context to a problem. So if we have, let's say complex number is, um, two plus six i, let's say two plus uh, three root, two plus two root three i, or uh, negative two plus two root three i, suppose this is the complex number. And I wanted to find out what's the argument of this complex number. So in this case, what we first do is that we locate the quadrant where, which quadrant is the complex number in. So if you see that it is the real part is negative and imaginary part is positive. So real part two units to the left and Two root three units up so this length is two root three and this length is that you see is two units so the actually this is the position of the complex number this this position that you talk about is the position of the complex number now what we're going to do is actually once you locate the quadrant locate the particular position of the complex number then half of your uh, job is done Lots of times what happen is the students learn a formula. If your complex number is A plus BI, tan theta will be straight away B over A, and that's, that's your argument. Now, suppose if A is negative or B is negative, there are different combinations. If I take B over A, it's still positive, but which quadrant is my complex number? That I need to know in order to trace the argument accurately. So uh, don't directly blindly divide tan theta is B over A and all. So once you locate the quadrant, once you locate the complex number position, then you just take out this point. So let's say this is two and this is two root three. So this point is two and this is two root three. So now you find out this angle. First find out the acute angle. So you don't need to take care of the sign at all here. So tan theta you just do is two root three over two. So this two and two gone. So theta that you get is tan inverse of a root three, which is nothing but pi by three or, or you can say 30 degrees or 60 degrees. So this angle is 60 degrees. I will not do in radians because so far we haven't explored radians concept. Now this part is basically 60 degrees. So my principal argument that I'll write down, principal argument as you know, is this is the reference axis. So this will be the principal argument. That is nothing but um, this angle is 120 degrees. So the when you write down the argument of this complex number, argument of Z will be 120 degrees. Of course, the modulus you can find out. Modulus of z will be two squared, negative two squared, plus two root three, the whole squared, and root of this. That's gonna be four plus four times three. So four plus uh, 12 basically, and that's nothing but root 16, which is nothing but four. So argument is nothing but the this length, which is four. So it is, it is important that we understand the right process of finding the argument. Now let's take some more examples to find out the exact position of position and the argument. So let's say if my complex number A is negative one, 
negative root three i. Now this complex number, as you can see, is gonna be in the quadrant number three because real is negative, that's here. So real part negative, one unit here. And imaginary part negative also root three. So this is the possible position of the complex number. So this is where the Z is. Now, first we're gonna do is find out this base angle with the x-axis, real axis. So always remember you first find out the base angle and using that you kind of write down the proper argument. So when I find this out, so it'll be tan theta. So if I do tan theta, once again, you can see I'm, I'm not taking care of these. Once I located the quadrant, you really don't need to worry about where is the complex number. So tan theta is gonna be negative root three over negative one, which is root three over one, which is root three. So theta, tan theta is root three. Now, what we do is basically now theta is gonna be 60 degrees once again. So this angle is 60 degree, uh, which obviously we get by tan inverse of uh, root three, which is 60 degrees. Now, this is not my um, argument. This is not the correct argument that we're looking forward to. So since we know the principal argument is between negative 180 and 180, so you go clockwise this time and measure this angle. So that's gonna be 120 degrees. But when you write down the argument of this complex number, we're gonna write down, let's say negative one, negative root three i, will be writing down this as 120 degrees negative. So because you're going clockwise, your angle will be taken as negative. If a particular complex number is along any axis, let's say either real axis or imaginary axis, let's say if the complex number is um, eight, let's say z is eight, so since it is along the real axis, it is along here, the argument of this modulus is gonna be eight. So modulus is gonna be eight, but argument that you see is gonna be zero. So arg z will be zero. If the complex number is along the y-axis, if a complex number is like, um, if z is like, let's say eight, eight i or something, or negative eight i, this means that they're along negative y-axis. I mean, the negative, uh, this is along the positive imaginary axis and this along negative imaginary axis. So in this case, when you see the argument is straight away, if it's eight I, it is gonna be somewhere here. So it'll be argument of eight I is gonna be straight away pi by uh, 90 degrees. And argument of negative eight I is gonna be negative 90 degrees. So if you go this way, that's what happened, which is angle in this position in negative eta is here. So the argument will be negative pi by negative 90 and this will be 90 degrees. So that's how you write down the modulus and argument. Now, if a complex number is along the imaginary, uh, I mean the real X axis, but negative, for example, if Z is let's say negative eight, then argument of this will be blindly you can say it is gonna be, uh, 180. You don't say negative 180 because it, that is not included in the in the argument. So this is about the basic way of finding out the how to find out the argument and modulus. And now let us try to understand how do we, what are the properties of modulus and argument. So what is interesting thing is that uh, there are different forms of complex number. We are not going to do that particular part here but these are the properties that we have. So number one is the multiplication. So multiplication uh, property. So if we multiply two complex numbers, let's say there is Z1 with the argument theta and Z2 is with the argument theta two, this is theta one and theta two. When I multiply these two complex numbers, Z1 times Z2 will have resulting argument of, argument of this will be theta one plus theta two. So argument, now this can be principal argument or, or general argument, you'll have to decide that. Now, let's say when you talk about dividing two complex numbers, when you divide two complex numbers, their arguments get subtracted. So argument of Z1 over Z2 in this case is gonna be theta one minus theta two. So when you divide a complex number, argument gets subtracted. When you, um, multiply them, argument get added. When you raise a complex number to certain power, let's say when argument of, let's say I'm finding out Z1 to the power 
uh, n. So when you raise a complex number, it means that you're multiplying n times. So basically z1, 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 n times. So it's gonna be argument added, same argument added n times, which is basically n theta one. So let us just take a simple example. If my complex number is, let's say z is one plus i, you can, z1 is one plus i, and z2 is, let's say, one plus root three i. So when you talk about z1, uh, this is gonna be one here and one here. So this is gonna be the argument, which is theta for this will be 45 degrees. And theta for this, if you find out the argument, uh, in this case, one plus root three, so it'll be here. So this is real part is the same, but imaginary part is root three. Um, so this length, so this angle is gonna be, theta two is gonna be uh, 60 degrees. Because if you take this as one and this as root three and apply basic trig ratio, you get theta two as uh, root, um, uh, theta two as 60 degrees. Now, if I multiply these two complex number, so if I multiply these two complex number, the resulting complex number, whatever I'll have, its argument is gonna be, 105 degrees. So if I add them up, the arguments, that's how, what we get. If I divide them, let's say Z1 over Z2, the argument is gonna be negative 15 degrees. So argument of, um, so this is gonna be the argument of the resulting complex number. If I'm, let's say finding out what's the argument of Z1, let's say to the power of two, it is gonna be simply 90 degrees because if you multiply the complex number twice. And it'll be interesting to see whether it comes 90 degree. So if I do Z1 squared, let's see what do we get? One plus I, the whole square, what you get is one plus two I and minus I squared. So minus I squared gone because, uh, I mean, plus I squared, uh, which will be negative one. So negative one plus one gone, which is two I. So if two I is a complex number you're looking at, its argument is definitely 90 degrees. So, so that's how you tackle these properties. Obviously, once you understand the different forms of the complex numbers, uh, you will definitely understand the things better. So that's it about modulus and argument of the complex number.